In this video, I'm going to talk about my training and meal plan for 2022. I'm going to go through the calories I'm eating, specifically the food that I'm eating, what my training looks like at the moment, and how it all fits together. A bit of a trigger warning, if you find talk about fat loss or calories triggering, I would advise that you don't watch this video. I really wouldn't want to make anybody feel bad about themselves or their body or make them feel like they need to lose weight or that they need to be thinking about any of this because you don't. At the end of the day, if it's not something you want to think about or pursue right now, that is totally fine. You never have to. You never have to track calories. You never have to go on a diet. You are absolutely worthy exactly as you are right now. However, I perform in a sport. I want to get better at my sport and for me, I feel healthier, slightly lower body fat percentage than I am at now. I am doing this in the healthiest and slowest way possible, and I'm totally okay with that. I've lost weight loads of times over. I used to be morbidly obese. I'm now not, but I am the heaviest I've been since losing all of the weight. I'm currently 104 kilos, and I would like to just be a little bit lighter because it will make a few things a little bit easier for me. I have fat to lose, so it's not going to affect my health in any way. Also, I'm quite a big, heavy person. I'm five foot nine. Bear in mind that my calories are gonna be quite high. I eat a lot. It's gonna be different for everybody, so don't see this as something you should replicate. If you want to do something like this, you need to figure it out for your own body. I'll start first with how I'm pursuing fat loss. So, food-wise, I will never cut out any food groups. I'm not following any kind of fad diet. I make sure all of my meals are balanced with protein, fats, and carbs. I try and eat about 150 grams of protein per day. I find that's really useful for me. I don't have any bad foods that I try and stay away from. I try and eat mostly healthy whole foods, but I do have stuff like noodles and pasta. That's totally fine. Like I, I exercise as a sport. I need carbohydrates. We all need carbohydrates. I don't have many fear foods anymore. I can eat everything and there's no way I'm going back to that because this good food bad food mentality for me just leads to binge eating so I'm, I'm not I'm not keen on that I'm not eating any time window I'm not doing intermittent fasting I did that it was horrendous for me worst thing I ever did for my ED terrible idea I won't be doing any of that nothing with a label or a diet no what I'm doing is based on science it's just a calorie deficit but it's working with my life the healthiest, most sustainable way I can, trying to keep my metabolism going at its normal rate. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I recently started following Miss Fit and Nerdy, she's called, and she has a video on her channel that changed my mind on how I was gonna pursue fat loss. Previously, I've just put myself in a calorie deficit and that has worked for me. But more recently, when I've got down to a lower weight or the weight I am at now, now I'm no longer morbidly obese. I'm just trying to lose a little bit of body fat. I've noticed it's much harder for me. From what she said, she's linked a load of studies and research on this. When you decrease your calories a little bit, your body can readjust to make that your new maintenance calories. And then when you go back to eating your maintenance calories, calories say a couple of months down the line then your body no longer sees that as your maintenance calories you're actually in a surplus and you might regain the weight again which is something that I have been doing I found that I need to consistently be decreasing the amount of calories that I use because my body keeps readjusting to my maintenance calories. That leads me to what I'm doing. It's working really well so far. She says you can implement mini cut cycles and the research on this is that people that do mini cut cycles as opposed to a consistent calorie deficit is that they actually lose more weight from body fat. So they lose it more from the body fat than they do from the muscle. They maintain more strength and they maintain the fat loss for much longer. When they come off their fat loss journey, their maintenance is much higher than those that just had a consistent calorie deficit. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. One of the best ways to do this is to actually work it around your menstrual cycle. And I find that I get really hungry the week before my period and the first few days. So I'm doing my calorie deficit three days after my period. And then I'm in a deficit up until day 22 of my cycle. And then from day 22 to day three of my next cycle, I'll be eating at maintenance. Currently, my maintenance calories are 2,700. 
and I work that out using a calculator but I also know that's pretty much my maintenance because that is what I tend to maintain weight on at the moment again I'm quite a big human and my calorie deficit is 2200 calories so because I'm doing mini cut cycles and I'm going back to maintenance this is gonna take a lot longer than potentially just going into a calorie deficit and not coming out of one. But hopefully the results will be better. We will see. The foods I'm eating at the moment include breakfast. I have the same breakfast pretty much every single day. It's, I'm a creature of habit, I can't help it. <laughs> so I have chicken sausages, two of them, and then an egg, a slice of bacon, and some seeded toast. And it's like slightly smaller, bit of bread than like the regular size with some of that like Dane packs like fake lure pack from Aldi <laughs> on top of that and I try and pile it up with spinach so I try and put as much veg as possible into my meals and then I'll have like a coffee a mocha or something and then I do have quite a lot of snacks throughout the day one snack in the morning and it's either a protein bar some sort of smoothie or shake or it might be like some rice cakes with some prawns on top or salmon, which I really like, and cream cheese. I do weigh everything. I find it super easy and kind of gamified <laughs> and I quite enjoy weighing stuff. I know it's probably a bit of a weird thing to say, but I've always really enjoyed trying to play the game of trying to get the calories spot on. Like I know I have 10 grams of cream cheese on each rice cake and I try and get it spot on the 10 grams just because I want to, not because I have to. It doesn't matter if it's not spot on, but it's like a game for me. <laughs> yeah, morning snack, super important. For lunches, at the moment, I'm using Prep Kitchen because they gift me meals every week and I'm trialing it at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. This video is not sponsored by Prep Kitchen. I'm only talking about it because I want to, but I do have a discount code if you want to use it. It is Beth and it will get you 10% off. So I'm using the Prep Kitchen meals. They have like beef teriyaki, Szechuan noodles, chicken, honey and sesame noodles, which I really like. Red Thai curry is one of my favorites. I like the pastas, like a bolognese ragu pasta, which I really love. And I'll bring those to work. And because I like a lot of volume and a lot of veggies i find some of the prep kitchen meals don't have as much veggies as i would want in them so i cook up a load of extra veggies to take with me to work and then i put them all in the microwave and mix it all up and it just means that i have a bit of extra volume in the prep kitchen meals with more nutrient dense sources i guess and those meals are roughly 750 calories per meal so it's quite a high calorie meal but i have a lot of calories to eat so and then my afternoon snack will either be a protein bar or i have been having like a bit of cake which i've been cooking recently i make quite low calorie cakes i don't really like having a lot of sugar and sugar isn't bad like it's totally fine to have sugar as much as you want it as part of a healthy balanced diet but for me, I get quite bad sugar headaches, so I tend to replace the sugar with a low calorie stevia kind of sugar. And this week I had a banana and chocolate loaf cake and it was so good. And it was only about 250 calories. So both of my snacks are around the 250 calorie mark. And I have that one around three or four o'clock. That's my pre-workout snack. And I'll usually have that with a coffee to get me a bit of caffeine to get to the gym. And then I'll come home from the gym in the evening and I'll have usually one of the noodle dishes like the beef teriyaki or the Szechuan noodles but I'll split it with my partner and what I'll do is I'll put it all in a wok after it's been in the microwave with a bit of extra meat so I'm using like shredded chicken that I make in the slow cooker and sometimes some chicken mince or some like pre-cooked chopped up chicken from Aldi or maybe some beef mince I'll add that in about 200 grams and then on top of that I'll add in a load of like stir fry veggies, the pre-cut ones in the bag because it's super easy and I want to eat quite quickly. <laughs> and that all goes into the massive wok, mix it all up, add a bit of extra sauce like soy sauce or one of the like sauce packets and some other seasonings just because otherwise it's just one meal of seasoning. I need to spread it out to two and then I'll split that with my partner Martin and that comes to about 500 calories for the meal because the original meal was about 700 and then I've added the extra meat which leaves me about depending on whether I'm on a maintenance day or a deficit day it leaves me with calories left over if it's a day where I'm in a deficit and I've had a high calorie snack in the day I'll only have about 200 left so I have one of the Fuel 10k oat muffins with some like food springs spread on top which is kind of like Nutella but it's got less sugar in it again because I don't like the sugar crash. <laughs> 
and the oat muffins are so nice as well i'll put a link to them below in the description because they're on amazon and you can just order them by subscription which i do every month they're so good so i'll either have one of those or if i've got more calories left over then i'll have like a, a cookie porridge bowl so i've got a cookie flavoring and i have oats and i'll put in some like other bits and bobs i'll share my recipe for that eventually but i'm really winging it and trying out lots of different things at the moment but the bowl of cookie cookie flavored oats ends up about 400 calories and then on top of that i have some of the food spring spread as well like i would on the muffin and i have the oats with skim milk because i hate hate porridge with water ever since being on the tv show sas who does wins can't stand it i need milk in my porridge <laughs> and it also needs to be super sweet there is no way in hell am i ever eating salty porridge again Blech but i love porridge so it needs to taste like cookies it needs to taste super sweet i want to feel like i'm eating a bowl of warm cookie dough <laughs> so those are roughly the meals that i'll eat and i don't change what i eat depending on whether i'm on a rest day or whether i'm training it stays the same if you're not going to use a service like prep kitchen but you want to eat similar foods i do have a video on my channel of all of the meal prep stuff that i used to do I, if I was gonna do this and I wasn't working with Prep Kitchen, I think I would batch prep my meals again. So I do like sausage casserole, a beef chili, chicken casserole, beef stews, curries, and then in the evening sometimes have stir fries. I used to do all of those kind of meals and it worked out really well for me because I could just batch prep them and then freeze them. And I know exactly how many calories were in each and every meal, which was super handy. If I didn't have access to Prep Kitchen, then that is what I would do, I think. And obviously if I stopped working with them anytime in the future that's what i'll go back to if you want some ideas for some meals i've just launched my ebook which has seven meals in it that you can cook you can either cook them in a slow cooker or in a pan you can double up the recipes and batch freeze a load so you can just come home and pop it in the microwave and you've got easy healthy meals in the evening those all of those meals on that ebook are the meals that i would eat all the time before i started using prep kitchen so they're tried and tested they're full of healthy nutrient dense foods they're super easy to make i love eating that way <laughs> it is nice not having to cook at the moment but those meals are definitely cheaper to make they always make me feel really healthy and happy give me enough energy to fuel my sport and what i do for my training is is been all a bit up in the air if you've been following my channel for the last couple of months you know that i moved gym and that was really hard because essentially the old gym shut down really abruptly and i had to figure out everything <laughs> and i really love my routine and if i'm a bit out of routine i feel really thrown off i wrote down a routine really quickly and tried to figure it out and i think now i'm about there this is going to be weird because a lot of people are like never miss a monday but monday is my rest day <laughs> the reason for that is because we have barbell training on sunday and i want to go to barbell training so i need to have a rest day elsewhere so i miss monday instead which honestly i'm loving because i have a, i'm a normal person with a full-time job i like not having to train after work on a monday because i'm knackered <laughs> so monday's rest day and then tuesday i do a class the new gym I'm at is more of a fitnessy gym. It's not an affiliated CrossFit gym, but they do like HIIT workouts, which for me is kind of like endurance that I used to do. And it could be anything. They're like, they're really varied, which I quite like. And I know they're gonna be quite long and quite fitnessy. I use my whoop to track my performance and whether I'm training optimally. And I normally get about a 12 strain for my workout on Tuesday. So I know that I'm hitting my fitness goals by going to those classes. And that fills that hole for me. That'll help me improve and maintain my fitness. And then on Wednesday, we have barbell training in the evening. I get home from work about an hour before. So what I'm getting into the habit of doing is going to the gym a little bit early and doing either a CrossFit workout or something that's kind of like low intensity cardio. So I don't want to do like a super heavy hit workout where I'm like going crazy and like snatching loads before a barbell session. So I'll just like do something that involves getting on the bike, maybe some strict pull-ups or some strict gymnastics work because that's something that I really want to improve. I want to get better at gymnastics this year. And mostly it involves the bike because I really love the bike erg. And I'll do that and then I'll have a barbell session in the evening. And barbells at the moment, either it's either snatch focused or clean and jerk focused and the kind of warm up is always the opposite lift to the, what, what the main session is and we've been doing some absolutely savage 
paused overhead squat reps in the bottom of the squat. I actually got my old PB the other week. So in December, I could snatch 65 kilos. Now I could snatch, I snatched 65 kilos for a power snatch and then paused in the bottom for 10 seconds, which is insane to me. So I'm clearly progressing. So that's Wednesdays. And then Thursday, I have another rest day because normally I would have rest days on Thursdays. In the first week, I did try and go and do open gym on the Thursday and I just found that I burnt out completely. I was so knackered. The following two days, I trained pretty hard. So Friday, which is my favorite training day, <laughs> I get to go in in the morning and do open gym. And I try and at the moment, I'm trying to squat heavy because I feel like I'm not getting enough squats in throughout the week. I do something gymnastics based. I try and get some strict gymnastics in. So today I did a banded pull ups. I do banded work to get in more volume rather than at the moment, my strict pull ups are quite low. So I don't want to just be doing one rep. So I try and do at least like five reps with a band. And then then I'll do a workout which is normally quite a long time domain workout so I do today I did a 25 minute EMOM of double unders a bit on the bike kipping pull-ups and a heavy barbell I did heavy clean and jerk because I want to continue to be able to move heavy barbells quickly because again that's something that my gym that I now go to doesn't really do that much of they don't do heavy Olympic weightlifting in their workouts really so I want to make sure I maintain that and then I do a barbell session in the evening. So that's Fridays and I find on my whoop score I normally end up with like a 12 to 15 strain on those days because I'm training twice. And then Saturdays I do the Saturday morning class. It's just a huge group of people all training together and it could be anything. They're normally quite long workouts so it's quite endurancey, but you get rest as well so it's kind of a bit intervally as well. There's normally quite heavy weights and cardio and they again rank quite high on my strain so I end up getting about 12. I find I'm training to like a higher strain more frequently than I used to that's mostly because I'm doing different types of training kind of separately I obviously get quite a low strain for the gymnastics style movement and then on Sunday as I've said I do a barbell session again and that's either snatch or clean and jerk and then sometimes after barbell on a Sunday is I'll try and do a little bit of a workout after the session, which again, I'll kind of program myself. I'll throw some movements together or I'll look at the Vertex Compete program that I've been following from Matt, pick out some conditioning pieces or some gymnastics bits and do that afterwards, practice some skills if I need to, maybe do a gymnastics emom, and that is my Sunday, and then I'm sufficiently dead, <laughs> ready for my rest day on Monday. <laughs> All of those sessions fit quite well around work, it means I'm training in the evening quite a lot, and I have at least two days off a week when I'm working to just like chill, go home, quite honestly go to bed early. <laughs> but it's working really well so far. I feel like I'm getting better, especially at gymnastics, which is something that I've wanted to improve for a while. And it means I'm training five days a week in total, which I found is the best thing to do for my body. I find if I train six days a week, then I just stop recovering very well. My recovery diminishes and then I can't push as hard in my sessions. I can't lift as hard. My form starts to break down. I'm just generally sore and I start quitting more and giving up or not trying hard enough in the workouts. I find if I give myself more rest, then I'm more excited to train and I can push harder in the workouts, which brings back a better return. I get more out of it, I think. So that sums up my current training and meal plan that I'm doing. And I'm gonna to continue to do that until I reach a kind of body fat percentage that I am happy with, not through measuring or anything. I'm not doing any of that just on like feel and look because i really struggle with body dysmorphia i've made it super clear to my partner that he can say to me i think you're going too far with this or maybe you should think about not dieting for a while because i completely lose the perception of my own body and sometimes even when i have been super thin i've still thought i had body fat to lose and i can get stuck in that mindset i don't think that's going to happen this time because i'm in a really healthy place now with my body and my mind and i don't think i'm going to go back to old habits but it was super reassuring for me to be able to say that to him and for him to agree to tell me when he thinks i'm taking it too far because it is it is a bit of a risk if you struggle with eds that you might have a relapse and that was something that i was a bit worried about but i think 
in reality it's unlikely to happen but i just wanted a bit of a safeguard we're only three weeks into january and so far i've lost half a kilo i think so it is it's definitely working physically i've noticed a difference i feel a bit different and both in the fat loss side of things and i, I also feel like i'm gaining more upper body muscle like i can i feel like my shoulders are getting a bit rounder at the top which i quite like and i feel like i'm getting stronger in my pull-ups and my gymnastics movements so all in all it feels like it's working i'll keep you updated as i go along i know the last few times i did try and lose weight it didn't work at all and honestly i just it wasn't that important to me and that's totally okay we don't have to lose weight like it's fine but it does feel good to be getting back to healthier habits trying to find like my fitness again i also personally really need a plan to follow because if i don't have one i i can't not have a plan <laughs> i need strict routine for my mental health <laughs> really i need to know what i'm doing with my life otherwise it just all goes out of the window yes i can eat off plan i don't have to track it's not an issue for me at all and before doing this i hadn't tracked for probably a year and before that i intuitively yet so but especially with my training i need a plan to follow i need a routine to stick to otherwise i'm not going to do it and that's bad for my mental health if i stop training if i don't train for two days i start to feel like i don't want to train and then i am tempted to not go back so i need to have a plan in place so that i remind myself to go back to the gym and then i get there and i'm like I love this. Why am I, why do I think that I don't want to train? That's a bit weird. But for some reason, my brain just likes to forget things. It's like when I'm not feeling very motivated, I can't rely on motivation. I can't trust my brain, so I need a routine. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you an insight into what I'm doing at the moment. Maybe some ideas of what you want to do. Don't follow what I do. My body is different to your body. My life is different to yours. We all have different priorities and different goals and that is okay it doesn't matter where you are in your life right now you can do whatever you want with your body don't feel pressure into changing yourself for other people you are okay exactly as you are and equally if you want to pursue a goal of changing something or getting better at something that is okay too and don't let anybody tell you different it's your body and your rules so i hope you found this video helpful if you are interested in anything that i spoke about i do have huge playlists on my youtube channel different tips about lots of elements of crossfit training meal prepping food in general so please go and check it out thank you for watching this video and i will see you next time bye